if the one number board that came with this model is original, then I have a copy of the same locomotive depicted in the artwork from Lionel's old catalog. It seems pretty good from one or two angles, and then you notice the nose, and it looks like a villain from the Batman movies. The price wasn't too bad, and like those earlier Santa Fe F3s I fixed up, this one also has most of its original trim pieces. It's either packed very well, or the seller has a cruel sense of humor, and used way too much packaging tape, just knowing the frustration I'd feel trying to get this thing open. So yes, there actually is a train in here, and it's exactly as the seller described. The crack could have been a lot worse if broken pieces of the shell had been lost, but I think it's just a clean split. I haven't worked with 70 year old plastic before, and I'm hopeful that liquid solvent cement will work here to make this repair. I scrubbed the broken areas with degreaser, rinsed, let it all dry, and now I'll find out if I wasted eight bucks plus shipping for this battered hulk of a shell. The handle of a small paintbrush is holding the crack apart. I want to make sure that the liquid cement makes contact on both sides of the damaged plastic before I squeeze them back together. It doesn't set as quickly as super glue, but the liquid cement still forms a bond pretty quickly. The shell is molded from black plastic, and you can actually see how the solvent has fused the parts back together. It's still not pretty, but it's a strong repair that will last. Making it look good again, we'll begin with some wet sanding to remove the decal and to level out that sweet dueling scar that was once so popular in Germany and Prussia. I would call this a quality decal because it's really hard to get rid of. I think it took me close to 30 minutes to remove the last trace. And during that time, I also worked on smoothing the repaired nodes. A painted graphic would have been long gone by now. It's a shame that the decals weren't more flexible because they seem to crack right where the door would be. Maybe decal softening solution would have helped seven decades ago, but on an assembly line of some sort, that would have consumed way too much time.
This is an old trick from when I used to build models in high school. I decided to plug the holes on either side of the nose door. Those holes still have paint in them, so I'll drill them out to get down to bare plastic. And then, with a little cutting, a lot of sanding, and some modeler's putty, it'll be like they were never there. There are four holes, so I did this four times. I sanded a bit more, and the rest will be blended in with Tamiya Modeler's Putty. Most of the door and the surrounding frame will be covered by the Santa Fe decal. So while I'm here, I'll fill those recesses with putty too. This seems pretty good, but just to be sure, I'll give the repaired areas a light coat of red in order to reveal any high or low spots. Not perfect, but a little more sanding before the final coat, and the repair should be almost undetectable. The crack extended pretty far back into the body, but it didn't make it to the silver, which is good for me. There are just a few shallow nicks, plus missing or worn paint, but in the areas where previous owners were likely to grab it or pick it up, so that's not too bad. These will all be feathered into the surrounding paint using various grades of sandpaper while wet sanding. One or two viewers from the comments section had questions about the masking, so I'll spend a little more time in this video showing that process. I'm using modeler's tape from Tamiya, which is available in various widths. I'm not great with the metric system, but I think I'm using either two or three millimeter tape over the yellow stripe. The thinner the tape, the easier it is to shape around the curves. Usually, it seems that I hold down one end as I stretch, pull, and guide the path with the other.
So that's how I did the masking for the red paint on my Santa Fe locomotives. The yellow stripe is done pretty much the same way, so I won't show those steps in the same amount of detail. Counting the two earlier Alcos, plus this is the third F3 I've done, I'd say I'm done with the war bonnet paint scheme. Unless, and I hesitate to even mention it, but there are possibly two other variations I could try if I found the right donor shells. A Santa Fe diesel with blue instead of red, or one with black paint in place of the silver. But right now, after this is finished, I may take a break from masking tape. The silver paint dries quickly, and I also try to spray very lightly, especially on the sides, because I want to retain the lettering while avoiding the hard line that could potentially be created with the masking tape. It seems to be going pretty well so far. My first attempt at this, four locomotives ago, did not turn out as nicely as this, but I've gotten better with practice.
someone gives you the shell for free, it's best to find one as complete as possible. If you were to buy these trim parts separately, even used ones, these pieces alone would be over 20 bucks. I only have one of the numbered board lenses, but I'll reuse it just as a reminder of where this shell began. The other side is fine with a reproduction part, but it's nice to use as many of the original parts as I can. <laughs> 